Too often we equate fame with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it could be that a person traverses this earth unknown to people, but loved by Allah and the angels. But what then do you make of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where he said that verily, if Allah loves someone, in Allah idha ahabba abdan, when Allah loves someone, nada Jibreel, Allah calls Jibreel alayhi salam and says, Ya Jibreel, inni uhibbu fulan. O oh, Jibreel, I want you to know that I love this person. So you should love this person also. Jibreel alayhi salam does not need to know anything else about you except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you to love you as well. فَيُحِبُّهُ Jibreel. So Jibreel alayhi salam loves you as well. And then Jibreel alayhi salam calls all of the malaika and he is their master, he is their chief. And he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فُلَانَ to the inhabitants of the heavens. Allah loves this person, so love this person. So all of the inhabitants of the heavens love that person as well. And then Allah mentions, يُوضَعُ الْقَبُولُ so فِي الْأَرْضِ As the Prophet ﷺ says, that acceptance is then placed in the hearts of the people for that person. Love is placed in the hearts of the people for that person. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind here. Number one, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only love that a person should seek unconditionally and do whatever it takes to gain that love. And if you gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then anyone whose love is worth having is going to be transferred to you as well. So if you gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jibreel alayhi salam will love you, the angels will love you, and the people whose love is worth having will love you as well. So that's the first thing to establish. The second thing is that the love that the people have of you has to be of something that is actually of you. And so sometimes as Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah said, if people are impressed by you, know that they're impressed by the hijab, the, the cover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, the veil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you because they don't really know you. And the reality is that people have to love you for a righteousness that is actually true of you. And so you're loved by righteous people for your righteousness and that righteousness is authentic, right? So it's not talking about uh, likes online or how many people follow you online, but people who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, حُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّكَ The love of those that love you is transferred to you as well. And when Allah loves you and Jibreel alayhi salam loves you, and the angels love you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that love in the hearts of the loved people to him, the beloved people to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, then nothing else is worth pursuing. Because if Allah loves you, then who else is worth pursuing after that? And I really want to just hone in on this point when you're thinking about the angels and you're thinking about this extensive creation around you. The value of the creation to you is only to the extent that it brings you closer to the Creator. And that is true even of this mighty creation of the angels. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us beloved to Him, make us beloved to Jibreel, make us beloved to the angels, make us beloved to the Prophet, make us beloved to all of those righteous people who follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and gain the love of Allah and the angels as well. And may Allah gather us in that station of love in the presence of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannatul Firdaus where those special angels will enter upon us regularly and say salam we could look up and we could gaze at him day and night subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you get closer to Allah one of the signs of closeness to Allah is you become softened with other human beings. That's a sign of the mercy of Allah. If you want to know that Allah has mercy on you, your heart is softened when it comes to others. The way you talk to them is very respectful. The way you help them is selfless. The way you reach out to them shows concern for them in a beautiful way. That is a sign of the mercy of Allah. It shows you are close to Allah. <clears throat> Did you hear what I said? If you think you are pious, and you have an attitude that has no gratitude, remember you are not pious. If you think you are pious and the way you speak to your family members is rough and very, very harsh and hard, that is a sign that your piety is fake. It's fake. You can make six salah a day, 
your piety is fake. Why? Because true piety shows in your character, in your conduct, in the way you deal with people, in the way you speak to people, starting with your spouse, your parents, your children, your brothers, your sisters. That is true piety. Then your family members. Do you make your spouse happy, really happy by telling them things just to make them happy? Do you? If you do, perhaps you have a sense of connection with Allah. Especially when it is difficult, when it is hard. I was saying again this afternoon in Jumu'ah and I'm saying it again because we need to keep repeating it. Serving your parents is not going to be easy. How do I know it's not going to be easy? Because Allah says by doing that you will get Jannah. If Allah tells you by doing something you will get Jannah, it's not easy, it's tough. That's why He says you're going to get Jannah. It's very tough. When you get married and you have kids and your mother is now old and there's politics between your mom and your wife and so many other things happening and so on. And then you got to juggle between the two and you got to play the politics and become a huge politician in the house because you know how to please all the people by telling them things you don't really mean and so on. All of that is a battle and a struggle. It's an uphill struggle throughout your life. At the end of it, perhaps if you were genuine, Allah will give you Jannah because he knows you tried to maintain the peace. It's not a joke. If it was so easy, do you really think Allah would tell us, serve your mother, you get Jannah? <laughs> no, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Jannah, the commodity of Allah is expensive. It's not cheap. You're going to have to read Fajr, not just one day, every day. Then you get Jannah. Do you get the point? You're going to have to dedicate every day. There is no cheat day as though you're on a little spiritual diet. No. You know, when you want to lose weight, they tell you six days, no food. Seventh day, cheat day. No problem. Eat what you want. Subhanallah.